It's time to do some mid-sized truck shopping. Hey, it's Tim, pickup truck plus SUV talk, joined by my wife, Heather, in this video. And we're gonna talk about replacing your trailblazer. We had a Mazda CX-5 we loved. We thought the kid was gonna get the trailblazer. The kid turns out he's like completely Heck against no, it. No, won't go. So he can get his own darn car. <laughs> so we talk about it and, uh, you know, I'm getting the full-size Ram RHO later this year. So we have a full-size truck for traveling and stuff, but it'd be really great to have a mid-sized truck for the business and for what wife does for a job, having more struggle, car room in the rear and having more room for things we do. Stuff. Stuff. So I thought while she's here this morning, let's start the journey because um, I've been looking around a little bit and I want to talk to her about what decisions we make as far as buying a mid-sized truck. It may impact you as well. Maybe give some ideas. Um, when the Colorado and the Canyon and the Fort Worth Ranger came out, a lot of the other outlets bought the off-road versions of this, the badass off-road versions. We're not going to do that. No, I don't need that. No, we don't need that. So I want to find something that's inexpensive, that fits our budget, that we replace the Trailblazer with. So um, let's start with these choices here. And I'll kind of explain to the audience as well that uh, we buy vehicles for a variety of different reasons. So one of them, as a business standpoint, we want to buy something that's new, something that's new in the marketplace. So in this case, I have the Chevy Colorado pulled up, the Ford Ranger pulled up, GMC pulled up as well. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. The Toyota Tacoma pulled up because that's another option. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Honda Ridgeline, Jeep Gladiator, and Nissan Frontier. But those those three in the back end, they've been out for a while. There's not a lot, lot new with those. So um, while I do like the Ridgeline, I like the Gladiator. It just looks pretty cool. Um, and the Nissan Frontier is a solid truck for the money. Um, I just They've only redone the interior. They haven't done a whole lot with that yet. So I don't know. We'll, we'll discuss more about that. So let's start with the Chevy Colorado. And I wanted to see, while I have you here this morning... Um, what let, let's do a build, build and buy. Thought I click that button. So we go into build and buy, and it's going to take its sweet time. Okay. So I wanted to see what your thoughts were on different uh, models. So this we're going to start. So that's a work truck trim LT. Let's uh, let's click the LT. So this is the base truck. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's our base grill, steel wheels, looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kind of, I just kind of curious your thoughts overall on styling. What do you think? Of I this? like it. You like it? It looks pretty rugged though, but okay. I like it. Okay. So, and that comes with the 2.7 turbo, which has been a pretty decent engine. I mean, quite a bit of performance out of that. Um, I've been a fan of the four cylinder there in that case. So, we have two versions. Looks like we have the little bit higher output and the standard output, which is just a little bit less horsepower and torque. Uh, there's a Trail Boss. This one's more of that rugged kind of. Oh, the smile on her face there. <laughs> so I just am really fond of red. Oh, so, so, you, so we went back to LT and did it red, if maybe. If you did an LT with red, then maybe you get the same Maybe, smile. okay, let's go to exterior. <laughs> let's get radiant red tin coat on this. There we go. There you go. So you like the red. <laughs> that was funny. I've been fond of red. Oh, what do you think is Harvest Bronze? I was really a fan of this when I first saw it. You know what? I, I kind of like it, but it's just not me. Okay, so radiant red tin coat. Of course, upgraded price there. Uh, let's go back to the models. I, I think the LT would probably make more sense for what we need for a daily driver. Um, Trail Boss, Z71, you do get some cloth, or some cloth and the Ebotex, which is kind of a um, cloth seats. Billable Jet Black, Adrenaline Red Cloth Ebotex seat trim. So different seats. <laughs> let's just say it like that. So then the ZR2 there. So let's go, let's go LT. And let's build and price this. So we're going to do exterior with the red tin coat. This is the interior of the Colorado. Can you click on the Evo text so I can see what it's what's different about it? So also change tailgate key set to lock manual tilt telescoping steering wheel, 17 inch all season tires, wireless charging, which we'd want heated front yeah. driver. Okay, there we go. Heated front and passenger seats sold <laughs> <laughs> in our area. That's a that's a must. So. We get more safety features too, rear cross traffic alert and rear park assist um, and outside heated power adjustable mirrors. Yeah, definitely. Rear park assist is so, always good. Those mailboxes just pop out of anywhere. Right? <laughs> sure they do. <laughs> and there's your screen. Okay. So that's what that looks like in the Colorado. All right. So let's just go with those standard interior colors. Uh, heated steering wheels on there. Okay. So then options. Uh, pro essential skip plate kind of things we can add later. 
-hmm. Trailering, we don't really need trailering. Adaptive cruise control, you hate. So I'm not going to worry about that because she gets behind somebody for a while. She's like, why am I going so slow? And I'm like, you have adaptive cruise. I'm like, no, I don't hate that. I'm like, okay. That's the arguments, the discussions we have. So I don't think I sound like that. Just FYI, <laughs> we got to work on Tim's accent. The, the rest of these are things we can add. Uh, the sunroof would be the option, though. Yeah. Okay, power like sunroof. That. Sunroofs are great, actually, in wintertime. Okay, so. Remote starts nice. Is that included? Um, you scrolled past it. Go back down. Go back down. All right. Yeah, so let's, right let's, there. Oh, included in package. Included in package. So what do we have for, let's just do a quick summary here. What do we have for the summary? So we have 45, 47, 490. It's kind of what we built. And we have, there's a match in town. It looks like. Wow. Or I drive nearby. By today. Yeah. Celebration Server Lake, wherever that's at. I think I put the wrong zip code in. It, you yeah, did. it's Denver. Yeah, <laughs> so we got 40, 47, 490 for the Colorado. Let's look at the Ford Ranger. Okay. Because you used to have a Ford Ranger. So, yes, I did. 47, 490. I was going to grab a piece of paper and a pen. Oh, well, yeah. It got Sorry, my I'm stack. Just, ew, I, get it. I know. I got to clean up my office. Clean okay. Up your space. So we'll do it XLT, which is the same trim level as basically the Colorado was. XLT. Uh, we're going to look at this in red. There is your red Ford Ranger. I'm going to kind of cycle through these photos. Hmm. So what do you think of the Ford Ranger? You go back to the overall picture. Yep. That red is different. Maybe it's just... The photo, probably. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a little bit different in person. It's almost like an orangish in the picture. Yeah, I think in, I've seen it in person. I think it's more of a red. Okay, so what kind of options do we get with that one? Well, and so that's your interior screen. So you have the vertical versus the, like the vertical. you like the vertical screen? Okay. Yeah. So that's the interior of the X, XLT. Uh, we have the 2.3 liter EcoBoost, and they're actually offering a 2.7. So this is a little more power. Um, I haven't seen the 2.7 out as far as on dealership lots yet. And I'm surprised they're doing a build price for this because I haven't seen it out. So the 2.3 is, is it a, I don't remember the top of my head. Um, what powertrain it is. The, I thought the 2.3 was pretty efficient when I drove it. I haven't driven a 2.7 at all. And uh, that was in the Bronco. I probably had driven it in the Bronco, but I haven't driven it in the Ford Ranger. So probably 2.3 is where you go with. The 2.7 actually just did a big recall on those as well. Oh, um, let's not do that. Yeah, the, the problem with the, uh, the uh, engine intake, brittle metal. So I think 2.3 is available right now. I'd like to, I'd like to drive the 2.7. I'd like to see what that looks like. But 2.3 is what we have. Uh, we have, we don't need electronic locking rear axle for you packages. So the XLT high equipment group is your one choice. Let's one see button. power, adjustable seats, heated front seats. So yeah, power sliding rear window and 12 inch display. So okay. let's go with that. And then looks like they give a little discount with that. So then we go down, uh, you can do advanced towing, which we probably won't tow with this very much. FX4 off-road. No. Uh, trailer tow package. I would probably get a tow package no matter. I would like a trailer hitch. Yeah, trailer hitch. But not Let's necessarily see. the ability to tow. Large. Yeah, we need a we need a trailer hitch. Yeah, we don't always tow with these, but we want to have the it's option to, have to carry hitch. bikes or carry stuff in the back, extendable uh, storage bins and things we have. Seventeen inch tires, tunnel cover and stuff we can add later. Mm -hmm. I have some contacts for that. Pay protection. Okay. Film. So what's our price here? 43,970. And that's black. They actually make an hmm. they make an ebony color as well, which is a lighter tan interior. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was immediate. <laughs> so so that's I mean, we're probably, we're looking, okay. So 43, 43, 970, I think it's not bad for a four-wheel drive that's mid-size truck. Right? I, um, think I just have to see the color in person. Yeah. So GMC, and, and the reason that I'm kind of poo-pooing GMC is that. They don't have enough uh, for the, our company, for the business, right? The Colorado Chevrolet has a bigger name than GMC has. But if we were to build one, we'd build probably an elevation. Well, excuse me, we'd do four-wheel four drive, which I think it makes us, okay, we do an so elevation. So an elevation. Yeah. So the Turbo Max elevation, 41. Let's see what the exterior colors have. Summit white, certainly metallic, volcanic red tin coat. Now, just so everybody knows, I like red, but I won't just only get a red car. <laughs> well, yeah, but you should see it in the way you <laughs> want to see it. That's beautiful. Because I would definitely order something. I wouldn't. I would. I want to order it the way you want it. I'm tired of buying stuff off lots that aren't quite what we want. 
So that is Maybe the gym. Thank God you have being get a green car. <laughs> right. So that's the James Canyon. I think it looks pretty good. I like it. I, I actually like the style of the canyon better than I like the Colorado these days. Which I mean, we could do it. It's just it's just a little bit different. Usually, as I, like I said, the grill on that. Yeah, usually the uh, the Chevrolet does better as far as search traffic. It's just just a business. It's nothing personal. It's just business. Uh, you get eighteen inch wheels. Nice. There's your choice. Uh, uh, interior. You have jet black. We have cloth or Cortec. I've talked some, a lot about how I love heated cloth seats, but yeah. they do make. What is Cortec? I don't know what Cort. That's stupid terminology. I wish I could just say leather. Um, you get a safety. This is the crazy part. When you add a different seat material, you get different options. So we're adding elevation premium, jet black Cortec interior. We'll take a look at that. Armrest. Armrest, safety packages, remote start. Oh. Tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Yeah. Shoot, I want all that. Yeah. So it's, it's just crazy. You have to change the material choice to get more, and you get more options. It looks like more of a leather It looks cover. kind of, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's nobody's. It's like what I had in my Mazda. Not all brands doing leather anymore. They're doing like a combination of plastic and things because leather, leather is heavy. Yeah. And they want the way the vehicles get you know, lowered for better emissions and better fuel economy. So it's probably like a plastic kind of stuff. Remember that um, interior we had in the, the Tundra? It yeah. was like it just it wasn't it wasn't plastic, but it wasn't leather. It was actually yeah. pretty nice material. Um, packages, elevation premium. So we have the premium package. Off-road lighting. Don't need that. Sports bar. You're not going to need the sports bar. Uh, Dr. Cruise, would you well, hate? It's not a need question. <laughs> <laughs> Do I want it? Question. Uh, probably get the inter integrated trailer brake controller. Let's just throw it on there. Let's see okay. what it looks like. Um, I thought it was part of the package before, but. Yeah, but if I'm not going to be trailering, if I'm not going to be towing, do we need it? We don't necessarily need it. It's kind of a weird. It's, okay, that's kind of. I took it Sorry. off. Sorry. Apple, apples, apples, best pick up. So options. Oh, those are all things we can add. But we did add the sunroof. The sunroof it has a package. But why is it saying a package? There's a supply constraints on this one a little oh. bit maybe. But I'm not sure why it. Let's see. We have to have adaptive crews to have this. Okay. <laughs> okay. So 47,825 is basically our total here on the GMC Canyon. So 47. So the Colorado and the Canyon are pretty similar in price with the Ranger coming in at five grand less. Yep. So far. No, four grand less. Sorry. Four grand. Yep. Well, 40, 45 for the Colorado. So, so oh, yeah. So 40, you said 47. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. 47 is this exact match. Yeah. Okay, so 47, 47, and 43. That's weird. It seems like the Canyon you want would be more expensive just because they're trying to make them more of a premium truck. Yeah. Okay, so let's go Tacoma. So another option, Toyota Tacoma. So I was, I was on the right page. So uh, there's two choices. There's a hybrid and a turbo. The hybrid does not increase fuel economy. Does it increase your cost? It does. So what is... So, okay, so why does it increase your fuel economy? Because you'd be driving around town electric. Yeah, so when they set this hybrid up, they set it to be more power and performance, more torque and horsepower. Okay. Yeah, it's it's. I, I don't like the way they did this. So you look at the numbers, and up to 21, 26, up to 23, 24. So it doesn't really make a difference, as far as what I can tell, with fuel economy. Okay. And all the stuff I've looked at. You think hybrid, you think immediately fuel economy, but not in this case. Well, that yeah, that would be the reason I would get a hybrid. Yeah, I yeah, they just same with the Tundra. The Tundra has about the same fuel economy in the hybrid and the gas. It just says better towing performance. Hmm. And, and yeah, I don't like. I don't understand why they did that, and I still so, mystified by that. Then let's not click on the hybrid. Let's just do regular. I mean, I like I like the hybrid power delivery and the, the technology, but. I wish it was better fuel economy, and they just didn't do that that way. Okay, let's go to building price. So if we were to buy a Tacoma, it'd be the SR5, which is their kind okay. of their base trim. You can do a Sport um, 39, but let's do the SR5. Apples to apples with all the other Sounds good. things we have. This is like what consumers, like your base pricing. So um, we can do, we'll do a double cab with a five-foot bed. I think they okay. do. So we... In the Colorado, the Ranger, and the Canyon, did I have a full cab? Was it a double cab? What size of cab were those? These are crew cab. Crew cab. So the Colorado and Canyon only cab. come with crew cab. Um, and the Ranger, I believe, only comes crew cab these days as well. Yeah, crew, crew cab. I think they do an extended. Oh, I hate being quoted on that stuff. 
um, the crew cab. So we have crew cab, crew cab, crew cab. It's like and then Tacoma friend. is so, double. Yeah. Like so Tacoma, they, their terminology is weird. Extra cab is what they're calling a extended cab. And Toyota's world, a double cab is a crew cab. Okay. So we would need a double cab to compare. Double yep. cab. Yep. Double cab, five foot bed. Must select either the, uh, let's see. Black. Black interior. And then I'm going to add four wheel drive. Yeah. Apparently. So I have to. Just because the way that that's how the selections work. It's amazed to me that you can get trucks that are two wheel drive. Yeah. Supersonic red. A lot of people like two wheel drive trucks, fleets or down south. Hmm. Yeah, it's, I've learned that over the years. We just assume so much up here in Nebraska, four wheel drive is just mandatory, but in some places in the country. I've actually seen some Canadians who drive two wheel drive with snow tires. I'm like, yeah. holy cow, yeah, that's, <laughs> uh, you can do it. Um, I wouldn't do it. Oh. We'll have four wheel drive here. Okay. And eight speed. So let's do heated front seats. Everything else we can get. An after. upgrade package. What's the upgrade package? A trim shift knob, JBL, home lake, front rear packing assist, under your trailer controller, digital key. Wireless charging. I want to see what this one is too. So this one is the cold weather package plus SR5 upgrade. This is interesting. When I built and priced the Tacoma like a year ago, they had all these packages down below and all this weirdness. I said, why don't you just do an upgrade package with a cold weather package? And it looks like they're doing this. I think that's ideal um, to do that. I know Colorado was weird with that too. So maybe it's this way it's been. Maybe my memory is just not quite where it was today, this morning. But uh, I want. I, I think a cold weather package makes sense. And then mm -hmm. you remove the heated front seats and you get it all. So, and then the details were... Front seats, leather trimmed, heated steering wheel, shift knob, JBL speakers, home link, wireless charging, um, automatic climate control, rear under seat storage, LED bed lights, and the integrated trailer rear controller, uh -huh. and, and the horizontal power horizontal rear window. I just wish they would start adding heated seats to the rear like they do in some SUVs. Yeah, that's becoming more of a thing. Actually, I was um, I'm doing a luxury SUV launch, and somebody asked, why are the rear seats... Not just heated, but also ventilated. Mm -hmm. Just kind of where we're at in this level. Um, yeah, for the kids back there. Yeah. So we finished the build. It says 46. 46. Yep. That one's going to be harder to find because you can't actually build a Toyota from factory. You have to search for them. You just mm. wait around. Best luck. That's one of my frustrations with Toyota, the way they do their, build, their um, manufacturing. They just build a variety of blue ones and red ones and black ones, whatever, and you kind of get what you get. You can't special order them. So the other three that we were talking about was the Honda Ridgeline. Uh, I've, it's been a solid truck. They just have an HPD package. It's about it for that. So what okay. do you think of the Honda Ridgeline? I, yeah. Hondas are reliable. Yep. I don't know. I've never driven a Ridgeline. I grew up with Accords and um, minivans. And so I, I know Honda really well. So, I mean, before we started... Getting me new cards. I I had a CRV for years. Yeah. So so it's a good option. I just think we'll wait until they do a, a refresh on this, mm -hmm. which is one of the things I want to you know I really want to get a lease because I want to go through vehicles and it makes yeah. more sense for us and from the business standpoint in our world. I know people get so freaked out about leasing, but in our world for our needs, it's just a, it's we have a different um, different we're different different buyers. Uh, Jeep Gladiator. That's cool. So I like the styling of that. Right, so let's see. If we were to build one, uh, build price. Unfortunately, with my hearing devices, I don't know if I would ever really want to off. go without top. Yeah, I think that's one of the concerns. Is it's going to be? It's a little bit louder with that. You do that, and then you never remove the top. What's the point of having the Jeep? Well, and so my wife is um, has some hearing aids and things, and so I don't know if the Jeep would actually make sense for. Top cloth they can do. Some people like it. Some people just take their equipment off. Some people have wind control on their equipment. But I just, it's just a personal preference. It's not like an all deaf people, all right. hard of hearing people don't like. It's just my personal preferences. I'm not fond. I would love to have a Jeep. That looks a ton of fun. I just don't know if I'd ever take the. Full and it kind of defeats the purpose if you're not going to take it off road and take the top off. And that, right. that's what this is made for. And I, the Jeep lighters I drove, I don't think they're great daily drivers. I think they're great for off-roading and camping and overlanding stuff, but daily drivers. That's driver, true. Jeep 
isn't the smoothest ride on the planet. No, and I think you'd, uh, yeah. So I think that we'll kind of rule that out. <laughs> so we ruled out, we ruled Sorry, out Jeep. Jeep. We ruled out Honda just because nothing's really Love new with you, it. You're fun, but uh, <laughs> Nissan Frontier. They've made some changes to this for the interior, and I was just kind of curious if they have any pictures of the interior. So let's do. Uh, they do, and again, in Nissan's world, a king cab is an extended cab, and a crew cab is actually your true crew cab. Okay. So, and I think SB or SL is their space level. <laughs> they just they just make it so confusing when you're trying to build and price these for a Nissan. I don't know why they make it so confusing, but let's okay. Frontier. Well, I got yeah. Do I, I have to change drive train over here? Yeah. Full drive because we definitely want four wheel drive. S S V. Okay, so there's King Cab S V, Crew Cab S V. So S V. Maybe they got rid of the SL. <sighs> Confusing stuff. So pink color is already red. Red alert. <laughs> That's the name of the color. Red alert. That's funny. Um, this is your, yes, cookies are fine. Give me all the cookies. Um, so there's your sides profiles. Um, there is the rear. Was Frontier stamped in like everybody's doing these days? Come around the side there, and then we come around the front. So the mm -hmm. front grille is a little bit different. They made a little change to that um, mm -hmm. for the model year. And then we'll scroll down. I want to make. I want to see if the, make sure this is the new interior. Who says second red? Um. Okay, this is. Yeah, that's a new interior. I think. Okay, hold on just a second. So that's twenty twenty five. Just say this is 24. They don't have 20, they don't have the 25 out building price yet. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, now looking at the front tier, they made some changes for the 2025 model. This one is not it. This is kind of frustrating. They don't have the building price set up for the 2025. So we can't really build and price one today. Um, we did do a story on it for pickuptrucktalk.com, and they changed the front grille, and they made a bigger screen inside. That's kind of the two changes this year. So it's, And I know the pricing went up a little bit, so I can go to the website real fast. And the pricing is increased. So this is the new – that's the new front end of that. Huh. I'll show you different photos of it. But it's now gone up a couple thousand dollars. So the base price is $33,560 with destination fee, um, and that's for their – king cab two-wheel drive kind of thing so we can so let's look at this we can look at the building price on this and just say remember it's new interior new, bigger screen interior which let me show the 2025 nissan frontier sorry doing this on the fly but i know i have the details here so that'll open up and then so yep and joe wrote this up so we have the more six foot foot bed options for the crew cab which we wouldn't need the Pro 4X gets some different changes, but that's a new interior there mm -hmm. on the Frontier. So a much wider screen, much bigger, much easier to see on this Frontier. So we have that. So we'll take that thought in our head okay. and the, the interior, and we'll look at the building price for this Crew Cab SV. We'll resume on this. So we know. So let's just add a. Um, we'll. I'll, I'll look at the pricing here in a minute on that price that video that post I put out as all the pricing built into it. Okay. Because I have it right down here. So we can see what the true price is going to be. So we have the crew cab four wheel drive SV. So crew cab four wheel drive SV is 40,600. 40, and it's saying 39. So we're going to add about a thousand bucks. So whatever price I give you, we're going to add about a thousand bucks. So we have. But that's without all the extras we've been adding into the others. Correct. So let's see what technology add we can add. So remote engine start. Yeah. What the, we have to add a technology package. We'll accept that. Um, wireless phone charger. We'll add that. So it looks like we can add more stuff. We don't need a cable set, dual camera, drive recorder, virtual key. No. And then we can so lighting, water lights. Oh, those are illuminated kick plates. We didn't add mm -hmm. that for that one. Um, interior color is a premium cloth. Yeah. There's also a sandstone sandstone cloth or 
Charcoal. Charcoal. So do you, I like the the charcoal. Charcoal. I figured you did. Um, other protection, floor mats, scuff guards, all season kick plates. We didn't do that for the others. Nope. Uh, lighting cargo area. Seatback organizer. Nope, we didn't do any of that stuff. And then looking at. I think you need to go. Yeah, the safety. Uh, security impact sensor. What is that? But as a quick cure for the horn when a small impact is detected. Oh, we, we didn't do that. Mm -mm. Those are all add on options. Off road adventure kit, first aid kit, I'm gonna trash bin. Nope. So we didn't. Interesting. I keep wanting to add more to this cost because the price is, it seems like too low, but let's, let's go to towing. There you go. Tow hitch receiver. We need to get that. Tow mode switch. Okay. And then we need to go to packages. Yeah. Okay. So technology package details of that gives us intelligent cruise control, rear mic braking, high beam assist. Okay. So that was in that package. And then SV convenience package. Look at details for that. Includes, yeah. That make this kind of hard to use website. Uh, we're going to remove some things to get this package. That's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Multi link. There we go. I guess we'll move this way. Move engine start, remote engine start, class four trailer hitch. So this includes all that. So okay. we'll get the remote start plus the trailer hitch. Hard body addition, it just changes the look. We can see the details there. So it's that old school kind of frontier look. But I don't think we, I don't know if 2025 is going to carry that forward. And then the okay. fender audio system. So not much going on there as far as different options and things. And so our summary is going to be 42,550. So say it's a thousand bucks more because of the change. 40, so say it's 43,500. Hmm. And this is a natural aspirated V6, plenty of horsepower and torque in this. Um, you don't have the turbos, which a lot of people have concerns about reliability with turbos. In our case, it wouldn't matter with the lease deal we're doing. But it's not as spirited of a drive as the turbocharged engines, but it's a naturally aspirated V6. So what I've got right now is the Nissan and the Ranger mm -hmm. are at 43, yep. the Tacoma at 46, and the Canyon in Colorado at 47. Yeah. So based on, I would need to go back and look at when we've had each of these, because I want to say we've had all of these. Yeah, we have, the only thing we haven't had is the, the 2025 Frontier. No, we had the Ranger Raptor. Yeah, we, had the, we had the Raptor. Yeah, we haven't. Tons of people stopped to see the Raptor. <laughs> we haven't, yeah, we need to, we need to see what's available in the area and, and we need to check out these base models. So I need to go back and I need to watch our videos on those to see, because a lot of times I'll. Get remember chance, things or, and I'll yeah. remember oh I loved that one oh I didn't really like that one and that will help me narrow down our list too yeah so this is uh this is probably part one of those videos what do you guys think what stood out to you what's surprising as far as details and what we chose were you surprised the full mid-size trucks are 40 I had a guy the other day say that he thought any full-size four-wheel drive truck should cost twenty thousand dollars <laughs> and I was like Sorry. what decade are you living in so I was just thinking the same thing Maybe when I was in high school. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, pricing has gotten more. I, I think it's interesting. The Frontier is still inexpensive. You know, historically they've been a really inexpensive tracks. Been pretty reliable, and you know, having the features for that price point, that was a that was my surprise. I was surprised mm -hmm. that much, and I was surprised that the Colorado and Canyon were the same price. I figured the Canyon must be a lot more money. Mm. All right. For more of our shopping endeavors, actually stay tuned. We'll have a whole playlist of things we're shopping for, and we'll. Eventually, to be determined, I have someone decided when and where, and I want to find the right deal for this so we have the right payment. Yeah, that's the way it's going to work. All right, for more, check videos up over here. Website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. We will see you down the road.